Looking to move to Newark, New Jersey? Well, guess what? Here we are in Newark and we'll be showcasing what there is to do here and what Newark has to offer. Besides showing you what else is to offer here, we're going to be showcasing different price points of different homes here in the neighborhood so you can see what may fit within your budget and what is there to do here in Newark of New Jersey. Right now we are in Halsey Street. This is the downtown of Newark and as you can see it's very walkable. There are cafes and shops here and we are in more of the center of Newark. We will be showing you a park that's more towards the north and if you're looking to fly into Newark, well, you have the Newark International Airport in the south of Newark. What's there to do around here, by the way? There's so much that is available here in this area. I mean, it's one big landscape of homes that are definitely much more widespread compared to, let's say, a town like Jersey City. You have plenty of spaces, huge highways, plenty of restaurants here in the area, too. We'll be taking you to a food places that are available here in Newark. You have Volsey Street here that has food from all over the world. And you're gonna, and if you stick around till the end of this video, we'll be showing the best restaurants, best stops that are within this neighborhood. So if you're looking to move between nine or 90 days, feel free to call, text, or email us. Our information is down below. If you're new to our channel, click the bell notification, subscribe so you can know what's going on here in New Jersey. My name is Brianna. I'm Andre. And we have Adrian recording today. And this is Living in Jersey City, New Jersey. Look, if you're looking to move in New Jersey, especially here in Newark, well, we get phone calls, emails, and texts from people just like you who are looking to make a move or have any questions. All our information is down below. And we're going to be checking out our first stop. We're going to see some properties right now. Let's go. Meet you there. Unveiling Newark's vibrancy, New Jersey's largest city with a population of 307,355 residents, offers a captivating blend of history and modern energy. Despite a median household income of $46,460, Newark boasts a surprisingly affordable housing market with a median sale price of $450,000. Delve into the legacy of learning at prestigious universities like Rutgers Newark, Explore historic gems like the Cathedral, Basilica of the Sacred Heart, or lose yourself in the cultural energy of Iron Bound's lively scene. From serene escapes in Branch Book Park to the artistic offerings of the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, Newark promises a forgettable exploration. Halsey Street, named after Newark's first mayor, William Halsey, boasts a rich history dating back to 18th century. Buildings along the street reflect the various architectural styles, showcasing the city's development over time. Some areas feature historic preservation efforts, ensuring this legacy is cherished. The street traverses four of Newark's historic districts, James Street Commons, Military Park, Four Corners, and Lincoln Park, with a two-block break in between. In recent times, Halsey Street has undergone a revitalization and transformation. The area has become a popular destination for restaurants, offering a diverse culinary scene. You can find everything from full-fledged restaurants serving international cuisine to casual cafes catering to a range of taste and budgets. The nightlife scene is also developing, with bars and music venues adding to the vibrant atmosphere. Recent grant and program encourage new businesses, particularly retail and dining. So we're gonna take a look at the first property. We're at South 10th Street in Newark. And yeah, you wanna say a little bit about the neighborhood before we introduce the house? Sure thing. We're over here in west side of Newark, right off Springfield Avenue. So it's one of the main streets. If you look across the street, you have the Family Dollar, a laundromat. So pretty convenient for those that are commuting here in the area. And Newark is commuter friendly. You know, you have buses that go to the Newark Penn Station, goes all the way to New York or down in, down in South Jersey. That's right. So the house we're seeing today is a two family going for $479,000. It boasts a six bedroom, three bathroom. So the first floor 
has two bedrooms and one bath, and the second floor has four bedrooms and two baths. Now, wouldn't you say this is great for investors? This part of Newark is called Westside, and as you can tell, there's going to be a lot of properties like this one that are priced around the same, the same range. And in, in an area like New Jersey, where the average uh, multifamily is around 550 to 600, this can be one of your starter investments. So definitely one of those neighborhoods here in Newark that you want to get into first before everything starts booming up. That's right. Let's go inside. Let's go. Right when you walk in, you have this staircase that goes to the second unit, which is the duplex, and then the first unit, this little hallway. We'll check out the first unit. You have the basement here. Most two families like this have their basements under the staircase, so. Now we're entering the unit. This is the two bed and one bath. Hardwood floors and uh, a stove that's supposed to be there. So you've probably seen the, the windows that are boarded up and when you're talking about a property in a neighborhood where most people buy an investment property, they want to make sure that people aren't breaking into the units. So they either block the windows, they have one of their workers staying in the house or both. So they just happen to have this window boarded up. Maybe that's been working out well for them because uh, it's been listed for a few days now. Now we're entering the second unit. It's a four bed, two bath duplex. You'll see the attic and how they place the, bed, the bedrooms and two bathrooms for your convenience. Let's check it out. Was it for that two family? What do you think? It's definitely one of those multi-family investments that you want to get into, especially at this price. I mean, we're talking about a tax of less than five thousand, and for each unit that you can rent out for over twelve hundred, you know, make the numbers work and see where that goes.
Right. So if you want to know more about investments, you know where to find us. And we're headed to the next property. Yep. So we're just arriving to the second property and this one is at a slightly higher price point. We're at South 14th Street and we're gonna check out this house, but before we do, Dre, tell me a bit about the area. Yeah, we're over here in 14th Street. It's right on the border of East Orange. And one of the best things about living in this area is you're right off the turnpike. Uh, whole, a whole lot of con construction going on here as well. You have your neighbors down here, plenty of uh, rental units coming up. But uh, besides that, this property is a newer construction. It'll definitely be nice to have as an investment property, Airbnb, or live in it. That's correct. So this is a three-story, two-family. It boasts six bedrooms and four and a half bathrooms. And it has a two-car garage with a recreation room in the lower level, which is the ground level. Yeah, yeah. let's go check it out. On the right-hand side, we have first unit and then second unit. They have um, two separate entrances, so that's a plus. Let's get inside. Initially, when you walk in, you're opened by the living space and the kitchen. This is an open layout. And then we have a balcony space. It's fairly large. You can even put some furniture out there. This is huge. This house. We also have a small backyard. In this house, we also have central air and central heat. Is ground level. I'm gonna have to show that room. Wow, decent. Decent, decent. There are no rooms. There are no rooms down here, just a huge living space that is connected to the backyard. Right when you come down from upstairs, the first unit, you have the garage. And now we're headed to the second unit. Once we enter, we are in the middle of the hallway of the house. So we can walk here to the living room and the kitchen. This is the same layout as the first floor. 
We have brand new stainless steel appliances, stove, fridge, dishwasher, and even vent. Wow, the recess lighting is nice. That concludes our showing for the second property. Any thoughts? Yeah, I love the open layout. It's uh, very wide in terms of the staircase and has really well lit spaces with the recess lighting, just a gorgeous touch to it. I love the wood of the floor as well. And I didn't expect that. It was very surprising for me to see that, but it was lovely. <laughs> it is it is surprising. So let's go check out our last stop here in Newark. We have arrived at Watson Avenue and we are right off the main road next to a highway. This is a two family once again with six bedrooms, four and a half bath, going for $939,000. It boasts a two car garage and a backyard with two balconies on each floor. So this is a new build. So you would expect that it's nice hardwood floors inside, a ton of lighting, recessed lighting, but you'll see it in the photos. That's it for our property tours. Let us know what you like about each property down below. And we're hungry, so where are we going? Let's get some food! <laughs> Before we show you the rest of Newark, we're starving and we want to show you one of the favorite places that we like to go to in Newark. This is Topps Diner. Dre, what, what is there to do around here? What is around here anyway? We are in East Newark and this is a river across from where the downtown area is mostly residential here and commercial industrial buildings um, compared to downtown there's a lot more uh, walkability over here it's plenty of cars that are moving past I mean right off Topps Diner is a main road and we're right off the border of Kearney and Harrison typically you would drive here you wouldn't walk here so there is a parking lot for your convenience and let's get some grub let's go. As you can see, it is packed here. So this is a really famous spot. It's been here for a long time and they recently renovated it and it's beautiful. It's classy, it's fun, it's welcoming and it's just a fun place to be. It's always busy here. I spoke to the waitresses before and they said, it's like this right when it, when it opens at 10 o'clock. And it's gonna stay like this throughout the whole day, especially the weekends at night. They're gonna have DJs here and it's gonna be a fun. This is going to be a night. <laughs> Lunch bags! Yeah. <laughs> so 
welcome to Lunch Facts. We're going to tell you some fun facts about Newark. Newark is one of the oldest cities dating back to 1666, making it older than Philly. Philly. Newark is also where Shaquille O'Neal and Queen Latifah were born. So Newark bred some of the most finest Hollywood stars that we have to represent. Newark is known as the Beer City. Kruger Brewing Company was born here making the first can in Newark. A lot of the large mansions here are also built and funded by beer barons. So brew lovers, Newark is for you. <laughs> Before we have this, the scrubs over here, also a fun fact about Newark, it, it is the biggest city in New Jersey. And before Jersey City took over the place, it was the most populated city in Jersey for some time. Yeah. Thomas Edison also made his mark here. You would see at Thomas Edison Museum here in Newark. And The Sopranos, that show is based on a family that was in Newark. It's, yeah. All right, we're gonna finish this food now and we'll get back into the tour shortly. Good food and good music. Really large portions, as you can see, we're still working on it. Jersey Institute of Technology stands as a national leader in the STEM education. Attracting over 88 undergraduates passionate about shaping the future, this vibrant student body fuels NGIT's reputation for excellence. The university boasts a comprehensive curriculum offering a diverse range of programs across engineering disciplines, computer science, applied sciences, and related fields. Several of these programs like electrical engineering, cybersecurity, and architecture consistently rank among the nation's best according to US News and World Report and Niche.com. NJIT itself holds the impressive number 86 spot in national universities for 2024. This academic rigor fosters a dynamic research environment where faculty and students collaborate on groundbreaking projects pushing the boundaries of knowledge and innovation. This translates into cutting-edge education for students, ensuring they graduate with the skills and knowledge that top employers seek. But NJIT's advantage extends beyond its stellar rankings. They are New Jersey's number one public university for return on investment, meaning graduate experience, high job placement rates, and strong starting salaries, maximizing the value of your education. Compared to private universities, NJIT offers an affordable option particularly for in-state students. Perhaps most importantly, NJIT goes beyond academics. Their unique cooperative education co-op programs allows students to gain invaluable real-world experience through paid internship with partnering companies, blending classroom knowledge with practical application. This coupled with a diverse student body with a strong international presence fosters a global perspective and a vibrant campus life rich with clubs, organizations, and events. Considering these factors, NJIT emerges as a powerhouse for STEM education, offering a well-rounded experience that prepares students for successful careers in a rapidly evolving world. Right now we are walking down on NJIT's campus and this school is known for its STEM program, so that includes Science, technology, economics, <laughs> economics. <laughs> engineering, and math, <laughs> not economics. <laughs> and yeah. the special thing about NJIT is that it has a really diverse community here, a beautiful updated campus like Andre uh, told me. And 
It also has a co-op program, meaning that you can experience real life um, world experiences, like going out to interning, to see what it's like to work in the field that you're studying in while going to school as well. NJIT is definitely hands-on and most of the students that come here, they might already know what they want to do in the future. Let's say like if you want to do aerospace engineering, well, you can go straight to the curriculum and begin having job experiences early on in your college career. Being in this campus and being surrounded by all these people that are in the STEM majors definitely, definitely drives you to, to succeed because from what I know, taking classes here, it's all about collaboration. What would and you say? The best person to ask about this is the cameraman. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I actually went to NGIT. I spent four years here studying mechanical engineering. I had a blast. You know, a lot of people here that you meet, they're very driven when it comes down to their profession. And they're very serious about it. That's what I love about it. Not only that, it's the number one public university in all of New Jersey. So it really pushes you to become better, to become better as, a, as an individual, a student, and as a person. So it's a school where it kind of forces you to collaborate and work together with your peers, kind of figure out different learning methods of each individual and find your strengths and weaknesses so that you can create a good hypothesis of different projects that you're creating. I mean, I had fun here. Unfortunately, they didn't have all the nice buildings when I was here. So, I mean, now that they do, but yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a growing, definitely a growing college. And uh, it's nice to be back here. So now we are in the main plaza of NJIT. Uh, this is where the campus center is, and we're gonna be checking out now. They have one of the best buffets in the area. You know, between this and Rutgers, I would probably go here, because they have a bigger option. By the way, we are going to be touring Rutgers later, and it's literally across the street. As you can see, this campus is huge, and you don't really hear much but students chattering, so you're away from the streets and it's a really beautiful campus. As Adrian said, it has been going through a lot of updates recently and now we're headed to Rutgers University, right? This is where <laughs> Andre went. Newark Rutgers is one of three regional campuses. There's one in Central Jersey, which is in North Brunswick, and there's also one in South Jersey, which is in Camden. And the amazing thing about Rutgers is that it's really close to NJIT, so they do some partnership here where you can take extended courses in NJIT for additional STEM programs. Andre could speak more about Rutgers. Well, this is the campus right next to NJIT, and NJIT is in a hill. Rutgers is more in a, in a flat area, flatter area, because you're walking down the hill here. Um, but the experience has been swell. You know, I graduated a few years ago and not much has changed besides all the apartment buildings and some new cafes and restaurants. During the time that I was going there was plenty to do daytime and definitely a lot to do at nighttime. Mm -hmm. And um, for, a, for a campus that is smaller than the one in New Brunswick, it has a lot to offer. It's not just meant for nursing or business. I took economics and I met people all across different, different careers, different majors. So I would highly recommend Rutgers Newark, despite what people say that it's a commuter school, it's what you make of it. And I definitely found a community here, so can you. And this is MLK. Uh, MLK is the, the strip that separates NJIT and Rutgers. You're gonna see the architecture change as you walk further down, so you might not even need the Rutgers logo to tell you that you are in Rutgers. Um, a, lot, a lot of the buildings here are historic. Right next to us is uh, the campus center, PRCC, and they're all similar in their architecture. They were built in the late 1900s, so they kept it that way because I guess it's part of their history, right? Another prestigious institution offers a wide range of undergraduate and graduate programs across various disciplines. Students can pursue degrees in arts and humanities.
sciences, business, education, engineering, and even law. Some of the university's highly ranked programs include criminal justice, public administration, nursing, and business. Faculty and students also actively engage in research endeavors across various fields contributing to new knowledge and solutions. Rutgers Newark leverages its location by offering cross-registration opportunities with the nearby NGIT, expanding course options in STEM fields for interested students. The university's campus is situated in Newark's University Heights neighborhoods, providing a dynamic atmosphere with easy access to museums, performing arts centers, restaurants, and shops. Rutgers Newark fosters a diverse and inclusive st student body, enriching the learning experience with a global perspective. Numerous student organizations, clubs, and events cater to various interests, offering opportunities for involvement and social connection. The university also encourages international exposure with various study abroad programs and partnerships. Compared to Rutgers New Brunswick campus, Rutgers Newark has a more moderate size, offering a close-knit community feel. The university strives to make education accessible, offering a relatively affordable education, especially for its in-state students. Financial aid options like scholarships, grants, and work-study programs further help manage educational costs. And Newark is mainly known for these two colleges and it makes up a lot of the livelihood that is here in Newark. We are close to shops, restaurants, and Newark Penn Station, so it's an easy commute from wherever you're coming from, whether it's other areas of New Jersey, New York, and Jersey City, pasturing does come here. We're going to check out the biggest park here in Newark, that's Brook Park. And it's only a few minutes away from the, from the campus, so I'm gonna take a nice walk, take a bike ride there, scooter, and it's just right across the, the highway. So let's go. Ranch Brook Park boasts a unique combination of history, nature, and recreational activities, all conventionally located within the heart of Newark. Step back in time and appreciate the park's historical significance as the very first country park established in the United States, dating all the way back to 1867. The prestigious designation is further solidified by its listing on both the New Jersey and National Registers of Historic Places, recognizing the park's historical importance and its exceptional landscape design. As you explore the park, keep an eye out for the architecturally significant structures that dot the landscape. Bridges, buildings, gates, and sculptures, many designed by the renowned Beaux Arts architectural firm Carrere and Hastings, add to the park's charm and historic character. Branchbrook Park goes beyond its historical significance, offering a haven for the community. The Branchbrook Park Alliance, a dedicated nonprofit organization, tirelessly works to preserve this urban oasis and enhance it for future generations. They also orchestrate a variety of events throughout the year, ensuring there is always something to enjoy. Immerse yourself in the vibrant Cherry Blossom Festival catch a concert under the open sky, or participate in community gatherings. The possibility of recreation and connection are endless. Ultimately, Branch Book Park caters to visitors of all ages. Whether you yearn for a peaceful stroll beneath the iconic cherry blossoms, a relaxing picnic with loved ones, or a space to exercise and energize, this urban oasis provides a welcome escape in the heart of Newark. Market Street's history stretches back centuries. Originally a Lenape Trail, it later transformed into a vital commercial corridor. The intersection of Market Street with Broad Street, considered Newark's Main Street, became a central hub for trade and activity. Market Street offers a unique blend of experiences. As you walk along the street, you'll encounter the Ironbound. Market Street serves as the eastern gateway to the Ironbound District, offering a convenient entrance to this vibrant neighborhood. You'll also encounter Military Park, it's an expansive green space in the heart of Newark, providing a welcome respite for the urban environment. And finally, you'll encounter Halsey Street, located near Newark Penn Station. Halsey Street has undergone a revitalization in recent years. Today, it boasts a trendy scene with art galleries, restaurants, and nightlife venues. Market Street has witnessed significant transformation throughout history. While some historic buildings stand as a testament to the past, the area has seen modern development. 
Prudential Center, a prominent sports and entertainment arena, is a notable landmark along Market Street. Let's delve into the stories of Ironbound and Market Street, two areas that have significantly shaped the city's identity. The Ironbound story begins in the 1830s when the area was primarily farmland. The arrival of the Morris Canal and the railroad sparked a period of rapid industrialization, massive factories specializing in metalwork, particularly iron processing, dominated the landscape. The neighborhood's ironbound likely reflects its industrial heritage. As factories flourished, the ironbound attracted a diverse workforce. Immigrants from Portugal, Spain, Germany, and Ireland came to New York seeking opportunities. Over time, these communities established themselves in the ironbound, each contributing to the neighborhood's cultural richness. Today, the ironbound is predominantly Portuguese Brazilian, with a vibrant atmosphere reflecting this heritage. Restaurants serving delicious Portuguese cuisine, bakeries overflowing with tempting pastries, and shops filled with cultural artifacts line the streets. The annual Ironbound Portuguese Festival is a testament to the enduring spirit and traditions of this community. Both Ironbound and Market Street continue to evolve. The Ironbound strives to preserve its cultural heritage while embracing new businesses and residents. Market Street is expected to see further development potentially solidifying its position as a vibrant commercial and cultural corridor. Ironbound and Market Street represents just two of the many captivating neighborhoods that contribute to New York's unique character. Exploring these areas offers a glimpse into the city's rich history, cultural diversity, and ongoing transformation. We are in Ironbound and you'll have a spread of Spanish and Portuguese food here. And typically on the weekends, this is where families come to eat as a family because they do have family style tables and all encompassing vibes for our younger kids as well. If you're someone that is working in Newark, probably going to college here, or just happen to stop by, and you're probably wondering where are the restaurants at? Ironbound is where all the food is. Like Miana mentioned, it's filled with Portuguese food, Spanish food, and they give you large portions for you to share. Or if you have a big appetite, go have it for yourself. Besides that, it's full of bakeries as well. Uh, our mom actually lived here way back, and she would tell us that it's, it's remained the same. Uh, it's been a big Portuguese community here. The restaurants and the cafes have always been here. The only thing really changing is there's a lot of new, newer constructions, just because it's nearby the Penn Station. Yeah, this is a really walkable street, and after lunch, you can even take a stroll down the block. It is a beautiful day, so it is the perfect time to do that. We'll be walking past some restaurants here, and you'll see what's in store in Iron Mountain. This is, what street is this? Market. This, this is Market oh, Street? Oh, this is Ferry Street. This is Ferry Street. We are in Ironbound, Newark. We have a Ferry Street barbecue. Okay, that's different. We have a pharmacy here. I see a Wells Fargo. Sushi Lounge. So, surprisingly, they have more than just Spanish and Portuguese food. But if you were looking for that specific cuisine, this is the place to go. We are riding down Broad Street right now, and this is the main road that goes all the way north and south of Newark. And this is where also, this is also where the buses are. This is the biggest street in Newark. Um, most of the traffic comes and goes from Elizabeth all the way up north to uh, Sea Caucus and Clifton area. And you have the buses, like Rihanna said, that are coming down here to the Newport area, to, to the Newark airport back to Jersey City and all across Jersey. Yeah, as you can see, this road has, it's a two-way and it has uh, three lanes on each side, so it's fairly large. So you can just imagine this is how people travel in and out of Newark. Yep, plenty, still plenty of things that are being done here. Uh, when we get to Market Street and between Market Street and Broad Street later, that's where the main area is, a lot of restaurants and cafes. And as we go further down south to uh, from Broad Street, there's going to be a lot more of uh, residentials, some local parks like the one we're on right now. York Penn Station opened its doors in 1935, quickly establishing itself as a major transportation hub for the northeastern United States. The rise of air travel and the decline of passenger rail usage in the mid 20th century took a toll of Newark Penn Station. The once grand station fell into disrepair, its once vibrant atmosphere fading. This period reflected a national trend, with many train stations facing similar challenges. 
Recognizing the station's historical significance and potential as a vital transportation hub, a multi-year renovation project began in 2017. This project aims to breathe new life into Newark Penn Station, focusing on several key aspects. Number one is improved functionality. The goal is to modernize the station's infrastructure as a priority. This includes upgrades to improve passenger flow, enhance accessibility features for travelers with disabilities, and create a more user-friendly experience overall. The second one is enhanced aesthetics. The renovation project aims to restore the grandeur of the station's art deco design. Imagine the restored beauty of the waiting room with its colorful terrazzo floors, sculpted wall medallions, glowing chandeliers. And the last one is a welcoming environment. The project incorporates plans for new retail and dining options within the station. This will create a more vibrant and welcoming atmosphere for passengers, offering them a wide range of amenities. The ongoing transformation of Newark Penn Station extends beyond the building itself. Some of the future plans and vision include a enhanced connectivity. Increased connectivity to other transportation networks is a possibility. This could involve improved integration with buses, light rail, and potentially even high-speed rail, solidifying Newark's position as a major transportation hub in the region. The second one is a revitalized surroundings. The revitalization of Newark Penn Station is expected to have a positive impact on the surrounding neighborhood. This could lead to a further development, attracting businesses and residents, and contributing to the overall economic growth of the area. And then a beacon of progress. The ongoing transformation of Newark Penn Station symbolizes the city's commitment to progress and renewal. Newark Penn Station's story is far from over. As the renovation progress and future plans come to fruition, the historic landmark is set to reclaim the glory and become a symbol of Newark's bright future. Home for the Devils in the early 2000s. The story begins in the early 2000s. The New Jersey Devils and National Hockey League franchise were seeking a new arena after spending years playing at the Meadowlands Arena. The desire for a modern facility and a more central location within New Jersey fueled this search. The chosen location for the new arena was a prime spot in Newark Central Business District. A public-private partnership was formed, with the Devils and the development team contributing significantly to the project's funding. Construction began in 2005. The Prudential Center officially opened its doors in 2007. The state-of-the-art arena, featuring capacity of over 16,700 people, became the new home for the New Jersey Devils. Beyond serving as a hockey venue, the Prudential Center also began hosting major concerts, entertainment events, and college basketball games, including those for the Seton Hall Pirates men's basketball team. The arena's arrival coincided with the broader revitalization efforts in Newark, contributing to a renewed sense of energy and economic growth in the downtown area. Today, the Prudential Center remains a major entertainment hub in Newark. It continues to host a variety of events, including NHL games, concerts featuring top performers, family shows, and more. The arena's presence has spurred further development in the surrounding area, with new restaurants, shops, and hotels emerging. The Prudential Center serves not only as a venue for entertainment, but also as a symbol of Newark's ongoing transformation and its vibrant cultural scene. If you're ever curious about where the artists are performing here in Jersey, this is one of those. And besides having artists perform, you also have the sports. Coming here as well, we have the New Jersey Devils. We have some local teams that play here too. And this is Prudential Center. The artists that come here to perform, so this week or this month, they had Nicki Minaj come here, Drake, and in June, they'll have Janae Aiko coming, which is exciting. So Prudential Center is the art center as well, and they do have the eSports tournaments that are hosted here as well. So if you want to do something fun with your friends and get together and see a show, you have Prudential Center here. It's easy to get to, as we said, Newark Penn Station is right there, and it's commuter friendly. Well, yeah, we appreciate you for taking the time to tour Newark with us. We hope you have a good idea now what's available in this neighborhood, and really just having to, having to uh, take a stroll of a part of our past here. So we definitely recommend stopping by in these parts of the neighborhood and checking out for yourself before you decide to maybe move, invest, 
or even sell in this area. That's all we have to show you for today. So if you're new to our channel, click the bell notification and the subscribe button so you can be the first to know about what's going on here in New Jersey and all the parts of New Jersey actually. We'll cover it all. If you love this video, comment down below what you love and comment down below what you would love to see in the future. My name is Andre. I'm Brianna. We have Adrian in the camera. And we are living in Jersey City, New Jersey. If you thought about moving here in this neighborhood, whether it's nine days or 90 days from now, well, shoot us a call, give us a text, or send us an email. All information is down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.